Racers, welcome to Build Lab Coro's weekly race recon, and we are kicking off the final week of Forza Motorsports Update 5.0 month. And before the end of the week, we should be seeing details on what to expect in Update 6.0. The major change that the community is expecting is the rework of the progression system that was announced way back in February. Though the progression rework seems to have cost us getting any maps this month, I'll be looking out to see what exactly is included in the update when it releases next week. So lock in here, subscribe, and I'll be sure to get you all the details when they're available. Before we get into news and community events, I just wanna take a second to say, it's my birthday. So if you're watching this on the day it comes out, assuming I completed editing and uploading on time, it is March the 6th and I am another year older. I am 34 years old this year. Uh, I know you couldn't tell by the gray hairs and the lovely, lovely depressing eyes, but I'm excited to continue this journey of getting into content production and doing a lot of streaming. So uh, if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate if you took a chance to subscribe here. It helps my channel grow. It keeps encouraging me to like get better. I'd love to hear feedback about what you all enjoy about the series or what information you'd find useful. Uh, I really wanna put a spotlight on the people that are still building up the Forza community. And I hope to do a part of that by doing some live streaming this afternoon. So if you are around here, I should be live. Uh, you should probably see it down in the bottom left, if I know my left from my right. I hope to be hosting some open lobbies, just some general relaxing and fun gameplay, so hop in our Discord, come join the VC, be respectful or I'll ban you, and let's have a good time and celebrate me getting older. Also, I just want to say as uh, we grow this community, if any sponsors or supporters or suppliers would be interested in partnering up, It'd be great to bless a brother on his birthday. So Moza, Track Racer, Semicube, Asetech, any of y'all people out there want to help me out with a wheel. Uh, triple monitors on a controller is getting old and my thumbs are actually starting to get calluses from how much I've been racing. But for real, my DMs and email are always open for business emails. So feel free to reach out and I would, uh, I I'm not above selling out. Let's just, let's just put it like that. Like any car has your brand on the side. Now with that little bit of shilling out of the way, let's get on to the community racing events. Up first we have Blown Piston Motorsports announcing their next week of Rivals events. This week we're taking the Austin Healy onto Maple Valley Short Track and let's just say having a relaxing drive through the countryside. The Austin Healy is a lightweight, low power car from the 60s and honestly it's a lot of fun. Traction's limited, very few tuning settings, just do your best. Relax, have a good time. And at nearly the entire opposite end of the spectrum, we have the average fuller community taking out the 1970s Formula One cars to Yas Marina for their rivals challenge. Any 70s Formula car is eligible for the competition, so pick your favorite or find the meta fastest one. From the previous lobbies, the Ferrari was poorly balanced, but it's yet to be seen in open tuning which one is actually the fastest. So some experimentation may be worthwhile, but safe bets that the Ferrari is gonna be the easiest. The majority of the 70s Formula cars are in the R Class, and if you act quickly, you'll be able to take advantage of the R Class open lobbies in order to level out the cars and unlock the parts that you need. The competition will unfortunately be over before the progression revisions, so some grinding will be necessary if you want to reach top performance. Moving on from hot laps to this week's wheel to wheel action, up first we have one hour of racing's fifth round, the finale at Mugello. As the series comes to an end, who knows, I might even finish my livery. The LMP2 Cup takes on the historic Italian track to crown one hour of racing's first Forza Motorsport champion. The top positions are all but locked up, but there is a scramble for points in the lower orders. I'm mostly up here just by sheer tenacity, but let's see how much damage reduction I can pull off in this final race. As the championship comes to a close, voting is under a way to select one hour of racing's next series. Discussions are being held to potentially host a multi-car, independently balanced championship around one of Forza's larger car categories. If you're interested in participating, come join the Discord server so that your voice can be heard in selecting the next competition. As the LMP2 cars are put away, the Trans Am cars will come out to play as IFEA's Trans Am Championship thunders out on the night of March 9th with the Mid-America 125. Along with their unique class homologation system, the races will be utilizing dynamic time and weather based on the real world weather at the tracks at the time of the events. 
So, if you want to catch one of the most uniquely managed racing experiences I, that I've witnessed so far, be sure to tune in Saturday night, with drivers gathering at around 8 and on-track action beginning after the 8.30 drivers meeting. I should be live starting at around 7pm to check over my setups. And if you know about any other upcoming events, leave a comment below or reach out to me on Discord or Twitter. And now for a brief detour back to the real world. This weekend was the beginnings of both of the F1 and World Endurance Championship Series, with F1 at Bahrain showing us that the rest of the field still has a lot of work to do to catch up with the all-dominating rivals. And I hate to say I'm right, but I was absolutely right. With the only things looking like they could possibly slow down the RB outfit being off-track drama. And I'm just going to say I'm not going to go any further into any of the rumors that have come out in the last week. It's... Silly season has extended into the first weeks of F1. There is so much going on around the entire paddock. Ugh. But until anything becomes official on any team, I am just going to kind of nip it in the bud here. I'm not going to talk about it. And unless it affects the sporting side of F1, I'm going to try to stay out of it. But if you do want to talk about it, I'm always open chatting about it during live streams. Just kind of want to keep it high level here. We got enough on our docket as it is. But... All that aside, the final results at Bahrain were a Red Bull 1-2 with Max Verstappen running down the road 22 seconds clear of the next fastest driver, which was Sergio Perez in the other Red Bull, and followed up by Carlos Sainz finishing up our podium. I want to say I could provide some more input on this one, but I, as soon as I heard the results, but I honestly just didn't watch Bahrain. Uh, I was out and unavailable during the race, and it looks like I probably won't even make it for the next one coming up due to my schedule. But what I did actually catch some of was the World Endurance Championship at the Qatar 1812. The weekend at LaSalle kicked off with the Hyperpole qualification format, coming to the International Endurance Racing Series for the first time this year. For details on the new qualifying system, check out this video here. After an intense 10 hours, we saw Porsche take home a 1-2-3 finish in the hypercar category, with the Penske Porsche converting its pole position to a hard-fought first, and its teammate and its sister car taking home third position, and Hertz team Joda slotting in between the two and second in one of the customer Porsches. It was a heartbreaking finish for Peugeot, sadly as an energy system problem caused them to nearly not finish the race. But ultimately, they ended up being disqualified for having utilized their hybrid system outside of regulations. The race would see struggles for the dominant players in the last season, with Toyota GR Racing and Ferrari finishing 7th and 8th respectively, along with BMW Alpine Lamborghini and Asada Francini still working to find their legs in the new competition. I have to say, the results for Hypercar this weekend are promising for Penske's goal at winning all of motorsports. And in GT3, we see Porsche again bringing home the victory with Manti Racing, followed up by Aston Martin in second and third with D-Station and Heart of Racing. The American makes had a rough go of the weekend, though with best placement being the Proton Mustang in ninth position and the TF Sport Corvette right behind it in 10th. Highlights in the full race can be found at the World Endurance Championship YouTube channel in the links below. The next round of the competition will be going to Imola in April. And for our final race highlight for the past week, we have NASCAR at Las Vegas. While I had been excited to go deeper into NASCAR racing this season, my hectic schedule has, been, has made it a bit hard for me to get into it. That and NASCAR streaming rates are very hard to parse. But I'm going to do my best to stay on top of the season wherever I can. The Vegas race would see Kyle Larson taking top step on the podium, followed by, uh, followed by Tyler Reddick and Ryan Blaney. But outside of the Cup Series, most notably for me, we see Raja Karouf taking home his first victory in the Truck Series. I'm hoping to see a lot more big things for him in the, in the future, and that is despite him being a WSSU Ram. Hey, Aggie pride, brother. But keep kicking ass. I'm looking forward to seeing you do great things. And in upcoming races, this week we have NASCAR going to Avondale at the Phoenix Raceway. And then turning internationally, I want to extend a Ramadan Karim to the entire F1 grid as we continue our series of Saturday races through the Ramadan holiday. The beginning of the F1 calendar takes us next to the Jeddah Corniche circuit in Saudi Arabia. And for my money, the one and only truly good street track with the current generation of cars. I have not seen enough of Vegas to put my money on that one yet, but I'm just assuming that the first one was a fluke because of the cold weather and the lack of data. We'll see what happens we'll see what happens this year when they go back when they have an abundance of data and appear to still be racing in the asshole of the year when it's still going to be cold, but I don't get paid enough to work out F1 scheduling woes. They want to cram as much racing into the year as they can. They want to get that Netflix money. They want to build all that hype. 
let them. I'm going to enjoy it when I can. And last but not least, we have the beginning of the IndyCar season with the St. Petersburg Grand Prix. Should my schedule finally be free, I am again going to try to host a watch along for this week's race. I believe, if I remember, I can watch IndyCar racing on Peacock, and I have that for watching IMSA racing. We will see how this all works out. So keep an eye on the community page for scheduling and announcements. With the racing season truly being up and firing on all cylinders, we conclude our absolute deluge of real world racing news and move back over to Forza Motorsport for this week's events. And in this week's feature multiplayer, we follow up the beginning of the WEX season by diving into Forza Proto Age. Unfortunately, the only modern car in the category we have is the Cadillac. And if you're a fan of the IMSA grid, we have a pale approximation of the ARX 06 and the ARX 05. Hopefully, someday soon, we'll get some more cars to fill out this category. It's criminally underserved, and as the category that's on the poster for the game should really have a bit more representation. Though, I don't know exactly how excited I am to race in the category being in, at the top of P-Class. And as I said in last week's video, the Formula Mazda series has been added as a permanent feature into the, into the hoppers. So, again, get out there, have some fun with the category. And out of the spec series and into the open hoppers, we have this week's spotlight car. We take the keys to the top end of Porsche's civilian range in the 2014 911 Turbo S. Making the brave decision to strap two spinny boys on top of their on top of their rear mounted flat six, the 911 Turbo S is always a high performance favorite. I look forward to seeing what type of builds the community works out for this one. Along with this week's spotlight car, we have the addition of the new car pass car the 2020 Audi TT RS, the spiciest hairdresser version. And Forza thought it would be a good idea for us to start shaking off the winter blues by taking on a little physical education with this week's open classes being the P&E class. Starting with the P class, we see the Porsche 962C utterly dominate the competition. Though the Nissan R91CP seems to be picking up some territory. What shouldn't be overlooked is the Porsche 956 also being a competitive option in the field. While it may not be an overly dominant car in P-Class, it does have a place to serve also in the X-Class. So if you want to take some time to level out a monster to take on the Brickyard, this week's P-Class lobbies could be a good opportunity to work on the 956. And wrapping up with the E-Class, I wasn't able to collect the data on the E-Class during the second round of these updates that would have been collected in February and January, but we're here now and we ran out the entire collection of data. And at the top of the charts for E-Class, we have the overall low-class hero, the 1990s Mazda MX-5, being quickly followed up by its Zoom Zoom compatriot in the Mazda Cosmo. Now that I have a complete set of data for every class in the Rivals brackets, I want to do sort of a retrospective on what my thoughts are on how all of this plays out in sort of the meta environment of Forza Motorsport. I think it's an interesting time to have all this information in one place. As the progression system gets reworked in the coming weeks, I hope to see a reshuffling of all these orders as people finally have more flexibility to start experimenting and testing with more cars in different classes. Though I'm also interested to see what happens with Forza's overall economy. Right now, the cash reward for races is fine for picking up new cars occasionally for most players that play sick casually, but if you add on the cost of upgrading cars into that, it'll be interesting to see how quickly players start getting cash trapped and what ways players find to work around that. So what I'm saying is we may not see the end of the AFK grind. People may just be AFK grinding so that they have the currency to upgrade their cars now. But that's all I got for this week. Uh, I hope wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you made it through winter all right. You're out there and getting ready for the better weather. That is, unless you live on the wrong side of the world and you're getting ready to go backwards in time and into winter. Um, and if that's the case, sucks to suck. But <laughs> no, no, I don't do that. I really don't do that. Nah, um... I'm just excited. I've made it through another year. I'm about to be another year older. Um, I hope that you guys continue this adventure with me as I keep working on my content. I swear, I'm going to eventually release a video that isn't a race recon. It's just that like, I want to like be consistent in one thing in my life, and this is the thing that I've chosen to try to work out. So I hope that this is useful. As always, if you have any suggestions, any knowledge of anything you want included in these videos, feel free to leave it in a comment below or reach out to me directly. And if everything works out, I should also be live Tuesday night, so we'll have open lobbies. Uh, you can join the Discord to come hop in VC, or you can just hop in the game with us. 
Uh, I am quick with the band button if people are extra spicy. And that's it. So, as I always say, race safe, race smart.